All right, folks, we are going to play Scramble Coin with Scar. Uh -huh. um, doesn't really matter who you play against, um, as far as I'm concerned. They do each have their own strategies. Um, they do each have different player uh, figurines, but that's not going to matter so much for this guide. We're just going to show you the figurines that I typically play with, um, the figurines that I have, and my typical play style. Okay. When you're looking at, you definitely want Scrooge. Always, always want Scrooge. He's gonna, you're gonna place him first. He can enter in any of the corners, and he can move in two, two spaces in any direction, and that's it. Um, Cogsworth, very important. He moves one space in any direction, and then two. Great, up, down, left, or right. Stitch three spaces in any direction, and he can pass through walls and destroy them. So if there's fences, you can go right through it. Goofy, uh, he can move in any direction, three spaces, and then he lands, He jump. he's a jumper. Very important, he does not pick up anything in between from point A to point B. When he jumps, he jumps over coins if needed to get to where you want him to be. He does not gather anything more, so he's great for gold. And aside from that, I don't use Goofy. I wait until the gold comes out. Uh, but I always have him on my team of five. Lumiere is also very important, just like Cogsworth. He can move any direction, one space, and then two spaces diagonally. And come in in the entry point is borders. But I always pick, like, typically a Lumiere, a Goofy, Ditch, and Cogsworth. Um, but it's going to dim out everybody else. Yeah. Uh, and Cogsworth. Right, it's my typical team okay if you go to use donald he's very good as well he can move three spaces in any direction but he picks up everything as he goes mickey mouse same way three spaces up down left right mini up on uh, diagonally i'm sorry and she can come in on the borders same thing with mickey um donald has to come in on the corner you'll see this as you get to know each character um you'll be able to gain your own style your own strategy um, there's several strategies that that you can play with um, and i'll show you that remy is really good because he moves diagonally two spaces and then diagonally two spaces so you can go diagonally diagonally or diagonally and diagonally or diagonally and diagonally or diagonally and diagonally you can even end up right back in the same box you were in for any of these characters that do like one and two or two and one um so that's gonna land that's gonna like with Lumiere, you could end up in the same space. Same thing with Cogsworth. You could end up in the same space you started in, if that's what you want. Of course, strategic-wise, you kind of need to think about that. Nala, very good. Moves two spaces diagonally, moves two spaces diagonally. Much like Mini, but instead of three, Nala moves two and two. So you have a potential of getting a lot more coins. Um, Eve is a lot like Goofy, Goofy the Jumper. Moves three spaces. Eve is a jumper. She moves eight. Pumbaa. He will destroy all surrounding walls at the end of his movement. He charges right through. He continues until he meets an obstacle. Um, but he starts in anywhere around the board, around its borders. Um, Eve starts in the corners. Fairy Godmother. She can start anywhere on the board. And she moves diagonally. Two spaces. Um, and she's ethereal, which means she can pass through obstacles and figurines during her movement. But she has to have an open space to land on. Just like Stitch, where uh, Stitch will destroy fences, so he can go through fences. Keep that in mind. Uh, Fairy Godmother can go through things, but she doesn't destroy it. But she can go through things. But also very important, she gives a plus one move buff to all adjacent ally figurines at the end of her movement. So that could really come in handy if you need to move somebody quickly. Or yeah, she's really good for that. That is a nice extra side buff. Um, Flynn, he moves one space in any direction. He can start anywhere on the board. He places a silver coin on his previous tile at the end of his movement. So that's kind of interesting. It guarantees you a silver coin, but you only get one coin. As far as the most coins you can get with Flynn is one because he only moves one space. Simba moves two. 
two, up, down, left, right. Two, up, down, left, right. But he jumps. So you are in a position where your maximum number of coins you can get with Simba is limited to basically two. One for each jump. Um, so keep that in mind when you're forming your team. That's why I have the team I have picked out. Because Scrooge is always going to give you a coin at the end of your turn. I feel that's much more important than anything else. Um, if you don't agree, then uh, feel free to use Nala or Simba or Flynn or any of the characters. They're all very good in their own right. So here, I'm going to walk you through the game and show you. So the RNG is showing us some, a lot of silver coins right here in this corner. A lot right here and a couple here. So I'm going to start with Scrooge. Always start with Scrooge. Place him in the corner. Your first move, your first turn, you just place your figure and move it. So I'm going to do that with Scrooge. I'm moving him. I'm taking kind of a risk here with not knowing what... Uh, yeah, she's good. Not knowing what um, uh, Scar's um, figure set is. I don't know if those change for each character. I don't know if they have the same characters each time you play with them play them but I am going to probably go with uh, Cogsworth for my next character just because I know his movement one in any direction and then two so I can use him to jump forward one and then forward two and I got those coins I'm sticking myself in a corner because I have to come back out here or have to come back here out here but at least it guarantees me two coins here. Um, or I could go with Stitch. If I place Stitch here, I only get one coin. Over here, one coin. Over here, one coin. You know, it, it's you got to really think ahead of where you're going to be able to move before you place them. I know Cogsworth's movements. Um, this is something I don't even need to think about too much. Be able to plan my moves ahead. Um, the enemy, on the other hand, I don't know what all of their movements are. Like Anna, apparently it's one um, up, down, left, or right. One up, down, left, or right, and one up, down, left, or right. And she can start in any of the borders. We know about Fairy Godmother because we looked at her and Lumiere. Sometimes you can right-click on the board. Sometimes it helps to turn the board. I will do that because it will help me to kind of envision Lumiere and Cogsworth's movement. Sometimes with Simba and others, it can be difficult to, you know, kind of determine where you're going to go. So I can take Scrooge and I can place myself further into the corner or place myself further in here. Either way, I don't want to move without picking up a coin. That's going to be detrimental. So since I know there's a coin here, um, that's not going to help me a lot until another move. So it's going to take me one two moves or two moves minimum just so I could get to the point where I can get that coin but I know others are gonna pop in I've got six spaces here I can count on I can count on a random number generator popping a gold pile or a silver pile there um, I can go this way and then count and then hope for the random number generator to throw me something in this so I have a little bit better chance going this way so that's the direction I'm going to go, and I'm going to take it all the way to the wall, because chances are you know, a second coin could drop over here. Um, yeah, I didn't look out there. It drops coins at the beginning of your turn, the beginning of the enemy's turn. You each have a, an equal chance of getting coins dropped right in front of you, or behind you, or next to your opponent. Um, at this point, I need to pick my very figurine for the board. This is where it starts to get a little interesting. I know that if I go with um, Stitch and place him here, I can get two right across there. Or I can place Stitch here and go straight across, diagonally here. No, Stitch doesn't go diagonally. See, I have to keep reminding myself that they don't go diagonally, that some of them don't go diagonally. I'm going to do that with Stitch though, but I'm going to start in this end and I'm going to continue on to here so I'm not clogging up this area with two of my figurines and I have a chance 
of hitting off somebody if they put them in this area with stitch. So that's going to do that. Um, darn it. I've, I've got, I've got to make a move without, you know, yeah. Good, not good. So, um, Cogsworth, I am so sorry. I don't want to take you into that corner to be stuck on that side. So I'm going to take him out of that corner. Um, and hopefully, maybe with any luck, um, Anna could come out here and take that coin if he wants to use all those moves to do that. But this is, you know, it's, uh, that would have been the better move on the game's part, but I didn't. So you can see how smart the AI is. Uh, the better move would have been to, you know, use that one, one and one. Because then at least, you know, definitely would have gotten. But anyhow, um, you also have to plan ahead for blocking your enemy or preventing them from getting coins. Now I know, oh my gosh. Um, I could either take Goofy and swap out uh, Scrooge with Goofy and guarantee I get that gold. Thereby also preventing the enemy from getting the gold. That's probably going to be a very good move right there since... We're pretty even in a gold, and I need to strategize better. Um, Stitch here is not going to be able to reach anything. I, I should swap Stitch out for, like, Lumiere or Goofy. If I put Goofy here, I could use Goofy to reach this gold. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to have to probably... <sighs> This is this is a rough decision because if I use Goofy over here, I can stop Lumiere. I can I cannot stop Lumiere from getting both of those. It'll be one or the other. Although, yeah, I was thinking if I was really smart, I could uh, I could possibly put uh, Stitch over here, take these two, but I can't swap that out. So this is what it's gonna be. I need to. I definitely want that gold, so I'm going to use Lumiere and take that. And then I'm going to go back to here, so maybe I can start blocking Lumiere. I'm going to, I'm going to have to forfeit that pile of gold there. Give it to Lumiere because there's no way I can reach it. Um, but I do need a, more coins, so I'm going to do this. No, that's going to just give me two coins and place me into a corner. And this is two is going to do the same thing. And not a really good board for these characters. I probably could have done better with Anala, with Nala or uh, or Simba just because of the, uh, the fences or Stitch on this side so you can break through those fences. But you get the idea of what I look for when I strategize. Well, uh, looks like Lumiere is going to... Oh, boy. I could... I wonder. Uh, yeah, I could use Lumiere to either go for this gold to keep it from the enemy. Or I could take Lumiere to get this gold. Cogsworth is going to be stuck over here for whatever reason. I'm going to swap out Cogsworth for Stitch. Because at this point, it wouldn't be worth it. If I keep Cogsworth, I can use him to go one space here, one space here, and I have two coins. So, you're getting the drift of it. Um, this is how I play the game, and I strategize to get more. Uh, get more ahead, and to keep the enemy from winning. Just because sometimes keeping them from getting a piece is just as important as getting the pieces yourself. Now, see, I... I managed to block them enough to make a draw. No, I won. Okay, so I uh, I won. I got three points, and you can see how far I've gotten so far. This is uh, this is how I play the game. I will put notes in this video on how to play Scramble Coin, some tips and tricks on each figurine. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you. Make sure to like and subscribe.